Welcome, and welcome to this first video of the Plasma Fluid Theory series of lectures. So there's uh, almost 100 videos on plasma fluids, uh, starting from simple fluid mechanics, so without that many fields, without currents, and going on to a wide range of topics in, in fluid theory, so particularly mainly to hydrodynamics, but also looking at two fluids, and then going on to CTL, MHT, so looking into more kinetic theory, um, and hopefully there's a, a wide variety of different levels, so I've tried to include some videos which are um, just looking at the concepts and just introduction, and then there are some which go through the, the full derivations um, as much as I could in the, in the time. Um, and so you'll find some lectures which are very uh, heavy on the mathematics, but I try to include some which are more about the concepts and just helping you try and understand things. Um, so I'd like to thank the, the people who started this, the uh, National Research Foundation of Korea, and the Ministry of Science and ICT. Um, it's a very exciting project. I'm, I'm amazed that, and very pleased to be part of it. Um, and I think it's a really nice initiative to make this, this public. Um, and I hope you find these, these useful. Um, I try to, to make, as I say, make them as useful as I could for a wide variety of backgrounds. Um, I haven't assumed uh, much in the way of, uh, of background beyond um, mid undergraduate physics. So I have assumed some kind of engineering or, or physics background. Um, you have to have to have learnt some kind of um, maybe first or second year undergraduate electromagnetics, for example. Um, so be familiar with, with Maxwell's equations. Um, some familiarity with thermodynamics, so the gas laws um, is pretty useful. Um, and some also some background in, in mechanics. So I haven't used uh, Lagrangian mechanics really here, but, um, but I have used, of course, Newtonian mechanics. Um, and some vector, lots and lots of, of vector calculus. So if you're not reasonably comfortable with vector calculus, so divergences and curls, um, then I recommend trying to read up on that first, um, because some of the mathematical derivations will be quite hard to follow. Um, so beyond that, um, I'll introduce all the concepts uh, you need. So from fluid theory, um, starting uh, then introducing uh, magnetic fields, introducing the, the problems that encounter in, in plasmas, um, we're going to look at a whole wide variety of, of different topics. And who is this This video is for? Uh, it's it, for a wide variety of different areas. So they're going to look at the topics which are, are focused mainly on, on fusion applications. Um, so particularly magnetic confinement fusion, or MCF. So looking at uh, EG Tokamax. But as we go through, I'll also introduce other schemes that have been tried. So things like Z-pinches and magnetic mirrors, um, because these are, are easier to understand, and they're in some ways, and they're also because the geometry is simpler. They're just straight cylinders, um, and this makes some of the concepts easier to introduce. Uh, but also because they're interesting in their own right, as as a, an interesting research area that was that was quite big in the past. Um, but these also the same concepts, the same plasma physics also applies in, for example, ionospheric physics. Um, so, for example, I'll introduce Whistler waves, which are were first observed in in radio frequencies from the ionosphere, um, and lots of the same same plasma physics is it's still plasmas, so the same physics applies. Um, of course, things like solar physics. Um, the sun is a great big ball of plasma, and so there's a lot of plasma physics can be applied there. Um, I think like astrophysics. So I'll look at things like shocks, for example, um, in both fluids and and MHD. Um, in plasmas, and these are, have wide varieties of things like supernovae or, or other uh, bow shocks, for example, in, in the ionosphere, or in uh, the solar wind also has termination shocks. So there are a whole wide range of shocks found in different different situations. Um, um, this is one of the, the areas that has wide application. Uh, so there are lots of different topics. I'll have papers and, and review things which are interesting for all these different areas, but particularly fusion uh, and tokamaks. And then within these, um, there are several different aspects which we'll, we'll study. Uh, the first is just equilibrium. So this is basically time derivative d by dt is zero. So what the steady state solutions look like? Um, if you don't have an equilibrium in in fusion, for example, then at least in in magnetic confinement fusion, um, you don't really have a, a start. So you need something which is has an equilibrium. Um, and so the forces are, at least to a good approximation, are all balanced. Um, and then we'll look at what happens when you have small perturbations, so, so linear theory, uh, so things like waves um, and instabilities. So as 
been said in the past that plasma physics is mainly the study of instabilities. Uh, and this is because we're interested in, at least in tokamaks, in understanding how heat and particles can be confined um, within within biomagnetic field. And so the instabilities tend to lead to loss of heat particles. And so we want to understand when, when do these begin, what, what causes them, and how do we stop them, or at least reduce them to a, a manageable level so they don't destroy the confinement completely. Um, and then we'll look a bit at nonlinear uh, nonlinear evolution. Um, and particularly things like conservation laws come in here. So what things need to be preserved, so things like uh, mass, momentum, energy are the, the simple ones. Um, but then things like entropy is an important constraint, or the divergence of B being zero is an important constraint as well in, in MHD. So there are, there are things which have to be conserved, um, which are important in nonlinear evolution. Um, as many of the equations we'll use are quite complicated, and in some cases there are analytic solutions, um, although they can be quite complicated. Um, but in many cases there are no analytic solutions, and so we often need to use numerical methods. And this is why quite a few of the lectures here will, will show you how, to, how the numerical methods work, and also show you how, how to implement them. So I'll, I'll show some, some codes, particularly in, in Python, because it's relatively easy to understand and see what it's doing. Um, it's not particularly high performance, but once you know the ideas, you can implement it or use a, an existing code. So I'll, I'll show you how the, how the equations are derived, um, how the theory works, and then how it's solved uh, numerically, is the idea. And so lastly, uh, a very brief description of what, we, what we're introducing here. So this is a, a concentrating on fluid theory, um, although there will be some derivations using kinetic uh, theory, but mainly concentrating on, on fluids. And so quite a few of the lectures will look at when, when is fluid theory valid? How do we derive fluid equations? Because um, the basic idea is that we have a, some kind of box. So we can say, okay, so I have some, I have some domain, some big system I want to solve. So this is some, some giant system I'm solving, like a, a tokamak or part of the sun. And I can take some small, small box of that and say inside this box, um, I have a number of particles. So I have some particles inside this box, which are going in different directions. In general, in tokamaks, a very large number of particles, so, um, so you might have something like 10 to the 20, 10 to the 21 particles, um, uh, so in a, in a tokamak, that kind of ballpark, because the, the densities are 10 to the 19, 10 to the 20 per cubic meter, um, and so this then the several cubic meters for, for plasma, um, obviously larger in, in bigger machines. So we have a very large number of particles, um, we take a small box, this and this is some so this is like delta x like delta y and delta z for example so kind of small box of size like this um, and inside this box we have lots of different particles they're all moving in different directions um, and we can write so it's the, the number of particles with a given position so in the box and a given velocity as a distribution function so it's time x and v and then here we have basically dx and dv. So this is a distribution function that says this quantity is what's, what essentially what's the probability of finding a particle with a particular velocity and a particular um, position at a given time. And so we have, have six, dim six dimensions. So it's three of space, three of velocity uh, plus time and so this is a, a very difficult system to solve, um, either solving the particles themselves, so 10 to 20, 10 to 21 particles, um, or evolving a six dimensional uh, distribution function. And so this is the, that's the, the kinetic problem. And so what the fluid approach does um, is to simplify this. And this is what we'll look at here. Um, is to instead say that if you have collisions this is, this is quite crucial. Um, we're assuming that we have collisions between the particles and the number of collisions we have and the rate at which this, this happens compared to the dynamics um, is an important part of, the, of the, when this is valid and when it's not. So we'll look at this in quite a lot of detail in later videos. 
Um, but if we have collisions, then, then the distribution function essentially becomes a Maxwellian. Um, and so in, in velocity, in any particular direction, so this is Vx, for example, this is f, we will tend to have a distribution function like this, where this, this width is basically like the, the temperature, the shift here is basically like the, the velocity, um, and then the integral under this is like the, the density. And so if we have enough collisions, the distribution function goes to Maxwellian. Um, if we don't have collisions, then this distribution function could have all kinds of crazy shapes, um, and we can't, in general, simplify that. Um, but if it's Maxwellian, then it's basically just a, a Gaussian, um, and this can be simplified to, to solve for moments. So particularly the density, uh, the momentum, which is nu. Um, if you want the actual momentum, you need the, the iron mass, for example. But so you see the density of particles times the velocity is a, a momentum density. Uh, and then you have pressure, p. Uh, and these can all be calculated from, uh, from taking moments of these distribution functions. Um, so if you have this f, this function of t, x, and v, uh, we're basically integrating over, over the velocity. And so n, for example, is just the integral of f, which is a function of t, x, and v, and integrating over velocity. And this density is now a function of, of just time and space. Uh, so this, this now has just three dimensions plus time rather than six and time. Um, and similarly, we can do n mi times nu, which is also just a function of, of time and space. Um, and this we'd get by multiplying by v, which is the particle velocity. And then we need a iron mass, of course. And so what we're doing here is, is starting to introduce these different notations. So I'll use, I'll try to be consistent that u um, is a fluid flow. So it's the speed, the average speed that the particles are moving. So on this particle, uh, this picture here, we have distribution function. The particles are on average moving this, this speed u, whereas v is a coordinate. So it's the, the speed of a particular particle over here or particle over here. Um, and so v is a coordinate, whereas u is a variable. This is the velocity. So this is like an, an independent coordinate, like uh, x or y or z. This is a, a vx, vy, vz is a coordinate, uh, which is not evolving in time, whereas u is, is a, an evolving quantity, like the fluid flow. Um, and then finally, we have the, the pressure. And this we can, we can define again by the second moment of, of this equation. So now we have mi, we have the, the second, deriv second moment. Um, you can do this in several different ways, but one is to take the difference between the velocity, the particle velocity u and the fluid velocity, uh, particle velocity v and the fluid velocity u, and that's squared uh, times f. Then you have a, a factor of one third in here, um, because a half m times v squared is the kinetic energy, and then three over two times the the pressure um, is the is the energy or the internal energy. So we, we do like this, um, and this gives the internal energy. So you see, because we've taken v minus u here, we're essentially working out this width here, and so this this is a measure of of the temperature. Um, here we have the pressure, which is of course then relates to the, to the temperature. One of the problems we'll come across is that the equation for the pressure depends on, on the third power of this. And the, so this is the heat flux, and the heat flux depends on the fourth power, and so on. So there's a, a problem with so-called closure, which we'll come back to in later, in later videos. So this series of lectures is about m models for plasmas, which have things like fluid moments, so densities, momentum, and pressure. Um, and these are quantities which change only in, in three dimensions of space and, and time. 
and this is a, a great simplified compared to the kinetic equations. And so although it's not always valid, um, it actually gives very good results in, in many different cases. And it's also usually tractable, so it can be solved, whereas kinetic problems are often uh, cannot be solved in, in reasonable time. So it's a useful area. Um, it's widely used in plasma physics. Um, and I think it gives a lot of insight into, into how, how physical systems work. So the kinetic equations can be very hard to understand what's happening. Um, the fluid equations can be much more intuitive, so give a, a nice way of understanding the basic physics. So I hope you find it useful. Um, see you in the next video.